Hello everybody. To me the camera looks like it's not level, but when I look at the level bubbles on the um, tripod it says it's level. So I'm not sure. Anyhow, uh, it could be how the camera's sitting in the tripod. I'm going to put the fences on this thing and here's one of my photo etched sheets of fence. And I need to take a look at this and see there's a plastic, protective plastic on both edge sides of this and I want to see if that fence is yeah I'm gonna to have to peel that fence free so I'm gonna get at it I'm gonna peel out some fence I'm gonna get my cutting board and a good exacto blade that I'm gonna completely destroy while cutting that fence out and get at it now what I mean by a cutting board is this hang on a second and we're liable to hear from Thunderpaws he's locked in the room with me um, the reason he's locked in is that PB is watching TV and YouTube and their copyright rules. I can't have any of the background noise from the TV to show in my video. So I have to close the door, which is annoying. But it is what it is. Rock hard solid cutting board. That's what you need when you're dealing with photo etch. Okay, it's got little grippies on the back. For, this is for a kitchen cutting okay but the little grippies work on my wooden desk really well and they work on the cutting mat so that's good you want something hard when you're cutting photo etch all right and the blade is going to get torn up regardless of what you do so i'm liable to use just a plain old normal blade some people use flat blades for it, some don't. It, just what you feel. I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Uh, no, let's just tilt the camera down so you guys can watch me. i got to get some cheater lenses on because my old eyes don't work the way they used to. And let's get some of this fence going. Now, I have two different types of fence. I have this fence here with these little braces hovering out these or I have just the plain old fence up at the top I kind of want to use these so I'm gonna start by cutting one of those free now looking at it there I'm just gonna peel the plastic back from one of them and it looks like they're only attached in very few limited places okay it does not look like they're attached to the sprue very much at all and again, I'm leaving, oh boy, yeah, I don't know about this, this blade might be too dull for this, ah, uh, that went right through, and it doesn't look like it attaches in many places to the metal runner. Yeah, my allergies are acting up. I live in Texas, and, well, <laughs> some of you guys are just now starting to see summer. We've had, well, we really don't have winter. Looks like this one's going to be a quick one to undo from this fret. I was afraid for a minute I was going to have to get a different cutting board cut this free because it felt like it couldn't handle this now keep in mind I left the backing paper on this for a reason I didn't want my photo etch sprue piece just flying around maybe I should just remove it I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from one side I know it's there to keep it from being scratched okay now let's see and keep fingerprints off let's see if I got it free is I may not have. Oh, I didn't at the ends. I see I did not get it at the ends. Yeah, that one's free at that end. It's free here, too. Not completely. There's something holding it down. It's free. That's free. That's free. I'm 
I didn't quite get it free there. Thunder, we don't need your help, okay? He likes to try to help me by clawing things. That's what he does. Okay, I did not get a free th this spot here. There. My fence is free. Now, I actually bent part of this fence. I can tell this fence is going to be fun stuff to work with. And I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do what I want with this fence. Okay, let me put the fence up here and I might just have to trim it to see if how well it works. I'll move the camera so you guys can see what I'm trying to do. Alright, let's raise the camera up, which means hitting this and moving that. I'm going to move the camera a little bit. Let me get the magic zoom button, the remote, for the camera. Let's get her where the fence is. The fence is running right here. Here, let me just stop the camera and get the camera and do handheld. Okay, I kind of like the look of the little aerials. It's going to be fun to do, though. I really should have a post here, and I don't. I have plenty of these little posts. I can stick one through there again. That's not an issue. I don't know why I didn't put one at the end. I didn't put one at this end over here either. That surprises me. So I'm going to have to get in here and fix that. Alright, let me get gluing because I know that fence is not going to hold up without a post at the end. It's just far too fragile. It's got to have something to go between. I'm also going to have to cut this. Alright because I don't want a fence across where the road goes. For one, I've got some custom dimensions over in here. I know I can bend this stuff, and that's not an issue. This stuff's going to bend real easily. Let me get working on it. So, let me get a post in there. I don't know if I want to run more fiber or not, though. I'll have to look at the underside. If I think it's going to be easy to run the fiber on the underside, I may do so. Back in a bit. All right, I installed the new post. There's one there. And if we look over here, there's one there. <coughs> I had about five extra posts, so I didn't have to cut them. Drilled a hole with the Tamiya Handy Drill. Batteries are getting low on this guy. I'm going to have to replace the batteries real soon. But, you know, that's one of the best purchases I made for model building a while back. Uh, I don't know how I got a spot right there like that. Eh, but we'll get rid of it. I can't light them, and here's why I can't light them. If you look at the underside where that post is, it's right where my thumb is. That's where the wood brace is that holds the um, board up off. It would be almost impossible to light that. I'm going to have to go outside, drill. I will risk breaking what I've already built. I'm not going to, so they're not going to get lit. So they might look a little funny, but that's okay. Can't have everything in perfection. All right, so I'm going to get these fences installed. What I'm going to do to install the fences, you watch me cut them. I'm going to put some CA in that. It's a bottle cap. Use the toothpick. Put the glue down along the side of the post. And just stick her on. Uh, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. I'm going to have to cut the fence to fit before I do that, though. So I'm going to get working. I'll show you guys the end result with the fence all installed. Probably take me about an hour, hour and a half to get that fence in there. All right, everybody. I pretty much have the fence done. It's got to cure up a little bit before I can call it completely done. But you can see the fence in there. I've also started working on the groundwork. That's preliminary. That is not the end all of the groundwork. Uh, that will look bad if I leave it like that. But that's this again. This is the start. Uh, and again, look, I got the fence pretty much on there. So that's the door to that little hut I stripped the paint off of. Yeah, and the paint came off of it. Let's roll over there. That thing had three coats of primer on it, and the alcohol took everything off except for one primer, and even took some of that off because you can see it. I put that back in that alcohol again. In fact, I should because I can see spots where it should. 
I'm almost willing to bet the rest of that paint comes right off there by tomorrow. I'm not in a rush on this hut, so let's put her back in. Let's get rid of that black primer. Because, <laughs> yeah, I've got some bad spots on I'm going to have to sand it anyhow. Probably pull that one door off before I put her in. But there you go. I'm going to talk about that book in a minute. So, let's let her sit, and I can pull, start doing the groundwork. This hut's what's going to slow me down, because I can't do the groundwork right here until this hut is done. But, once I get the groundwork done, it's pretty much mounting the Mercury 9, that, and getting the vehicles. And this is done. I will call this done. So, we'll be back in a bit. Alright, I've got one spot of the groundwork about a third of the way done. Um, basically, what I've done is this. i got a mixture of PVA glue, which happens to be that bottle of uh, Elmer's wood glue, and water right there. It's about 50-50 mix. i got a sprinkler, a pizza sprinkler, I found on sale for like a dollar. And I'm using some scenic wood, uh, Woodland Scenics Blended Turf. That's the lighter colored stuff. Down the center... I put this stuff, static grass, okay? Now the static grass is actually standing up in places, which I didn't expect. It's also clumping in places, okay? Which makes this look nice to me. I mean, that looks really good to me. I'm going to hit the rest of this with this stuff. Um, I'm also going to do some other things. I'm going to put some little clumps here and there to represent some bushes. And that's what I'm about to do next. I also have a bottle of this coarse turf here. And it will make good bushes. Mainly because the 1350 scale, let's think about this for a minute. This is not a huge scale. You make this too large, it's going to look very unrealistic. I also need to clean it off the runway edge right there a little bit. But there's no glue there, so it's going to be easy to clean off. I'll hit it with airbrush once this is all dry tomorrow. <laughs> this is going pretty quick, and it's going pretty good, and it's going to look nice when it's done. It's just going to look, that looks a lot better than that. This is just painted. You know, now I'm doing the groundwork because I'm getting to that point. I can't do all the groundwork simply because i got to get that building done first. But I can do a lot of it. Once the groundwork's done, I can put my stop signs in, one of which got broken and is missing. <laughs> They're so small, I'm not surprised it went missing, to be honest with you. And I still have to make the sign that goes over there. But, there we go. Wanted to let you see what it looks like. Um, I might film some of it. We'll see. Because it's pretty simple to do. I brush down the glue. I sprinkle on. Let it sit 20-30 minutes. Shake it off onto paper so I can recover it. And I recover it. And I'm putting it all back in there. Static grass and all. Simply because it's going to be mixed, and I don't want to mix different things, a mixture in my static grass bottle. So it's all going in that shaker over there. Alright, so there we go. I'm going to get at it and get busy. I'll be back in a little bit. Alright everyone, I got the camera hooked up so you can watch me do this next set. I'm going to duplicate what I did over here, which you can't see on camera right now. And I'm not liking some of what I did over there, so I might pull it. Basically... I'm getting my glue mixture and I'm just going to hit some of these places that didn't really take with other stuff okay like right along here it didn't take and this does mess up what I did earlier I'm not worried about that and I'm going to Blend them together. I'm trying to make a random pattern here. Okay. Because I want it to be somewhat random. I also want it to be somewhat in the center of this. It's okay if I have a clump here and there that don't line up. And yeah, I'm getting club brush. That's because my brush is picking up this stuff as I put down more glue, which is okay with me. 
that I'm getting my static grass out. And it's okay with me if the static grass isn't sitting upright, because I don't really care. The AC is blowing in here pretty hard right now, so this stuff's going to scatter. You can probably hear it. But I'm just dumping it on there, and I'm getting it on there pretty good. It'll clean off, the extra will clean off, and I'll show you how I'm cleaning the extra off in a little bit. Alright, so I got that on there. Then I just wait a little bit. I tilt it over on a piece of paper to collect the extra, and the extra goes in my shaker jar of miscellaneous. So I get a nice color contrast. That's all I'm doing. This really isn't all that hard to do. And then, well, once that hits up, I'm hitting it with some of this stuff. Okay, clump foliage. I've got three different colors of it. And I actually tried to put some flowers on some of this. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks funny. Here, let me show you. I gotta take the camera off the tripod though. I think the, um, here, I can't even see that. There we go. I think the flowers look funny on these bushes. I don't know what you guys think. I think they do. And there's static grass everywhere. But again, this stuff does clean up. All right. This is just to add a different texture and color to it. So it's not all uniform all at once. And I'm going to get in here with the airbrush and blow it all off in a little bit. Crank the pressure up on the airbrush. Blow all the seams and stuff out. I'll get it cleaned up and straightened up and it'll look nice. I'm about to hit the back of the building over here now on this whole side right here. And get this done right along here. All right. I got to wait on this because I'm thinking about adding something right there where that door is. Instead of just walking out on a lawn, putting a little square patio there. Same color as this stuff. The poor C-130 has been blown with grass dust. All right. Anyhow, I'll be back in a second. I want to do something.